You're watching Taste the Victory. Hey everyone, welcome back to another amazing deck profile. We got Mitch with us today, who Horse Gaming placed sixth at the North American Digimon National Finals out of over 800 people, two day event. Historic being our first nationals for the Digimon scene. Mitch, do you wanna go ahead and give yourself an introduction and then take it away with your unique deck list? Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, uh, my name is Mitch. Uh, my handle is Mitchuation. And my deck is all about horse. I mean, let's be real here. We're, we're here for the Trojan Pony. Um, yeah, no, no, seriously though. Uh, it's, it's a build that is, well, maybe I'll just walk through it and then, uh, and then I'll back it up and I'll kind of talk more about what it's geared to. Um, I, I've been getting this all tournament about how weird this is and people have been saying, oh, this, this list shouldn't work. And like, uh, th this guy is just crazy for running this. And um, so, yeah, I guess with the list itself, um, the premise of it, and, and it's something that I, I feel like is pretty common in security control builds, but it kind of gets lost in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's um, security matters. So basically, if you look through this list, you're going to see that there's very little cards in it that don't do something in security. Um, you know, you have your standard security control list with like Magna Angemons, you have, um, you know, you, you have a lot of like fluff cards that you might hit in security and it might not make a big impact. Um, especially with the black base, I mean, you have no real way of fixing your security. Um, I opted for the kind of reverse style. I, I wanted to, um, you know, recovery and whatnot is important and it's at the forefront of the deck. Mm -hmm. But more so than anything, it's about really stacking the security and making sure that whenever they hit into security, it's it's going to impact the board state in some way. Um, and, and I hope that kind of makes sense. It's um, it's different than security control builds because of the larger amounts of big bodies, mm -hmm. um, the ability to fish through the secu the security with the TKs, the the three of, um, and then also you know you have your standard recovery package, you have your standard um, removal package, um, you have your all four defeats, right? Just because hitting them can be game breaking. And in a lot of cases, they are just removal themselves. Like they just swing over your opponent's Digimon if it flips back to you. Um, so yeah, maybe like uh, going through each card. Um, started with the black base. It, the, the deck itself did start as a classic style. Like I had the Troy Mons in there. I had the Horseman. And I was using the um, Yellow Babies and with, y y you know, with the, uh, with the Black Tamers. Um, what I found with that build is, you know, first off, you want to have at least one set of level threes to take advantage of that free draw, but then also that free attack that can just come out of nowhere. Um, I was finding with the Salamons, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying before about security matters, if you hit a Salamon in that security stack, their guy's probably going to live. Um, it means the board state hasn't really been impacted. And it means that you just have another threat to deal with on board that you potentially have to use a removal for, right? Or potentially gets another swing in. Um, so I opted for the black base because Chikuri Mon is one of the very few rookies who has a security effect and can make an impact that is actually um, backbreaking for some of the meta lists. Like, uh, you know, all the bond decks. Like if you did digi digivolve the Gabu bond, if you did digivolve the Agu bond, um, they lose either a lot of their attacks, um, they lose a lot of their abilities, um, and, and it just helps in some of those matchups that we see are so prevalent right now. Um, really with, uh, with, with Jessmon too, I mean, that's one of the security control nightmare matchups, right? right. Um, like <laughs> if, if you see Jessmon across from you, you're probably just thinking it's an auto loss. Um, this deck has a few tools to deal with that Jessmon matchup and it starts with the chikuri mon um outside of that i mean you will see some of the things commonly uh that, that appear in security control like your core Dramons. um security control needs extra draws this is how you do it along with the chikuri mon uh, evolutions um mechanori mon and uh, i opted for mechanori mon over um jewelt schwarmer um, because i feel like you don't want to run both um and they, they kind of step on each other's toes a little bit and Mechanorimon is just so good into some matchups, especially if you pair him with Craniumon, the other big bad boy in my deck. Um, so I took a full play set of them. Um, they really help to delay the game and 
let me play out my big guys in a lot of cases. Um, if they don't have an immediate answer, they might just build up board state and flip back to me, which is a dream scenario for me because I have so much good removal. I have so many good bodies um, that are just being hard slammed on the board. Um, he is the ultimate game delayer. Um, I'll, I'll come back to Troy because uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll save we'll, we'll save yeah. horse for last. Right, people yeah, he's, are he's loving him. This guy. horse gaming, everyone was shouting this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of BoJack Horseman's flying yes. around. What stuff. is this? A crossover episode? <laughs> it was legendary. With the rest of the package, I mean, it's pretty standard. Um, you'll see Magnus in security control. You'll see defeats in security control. You'll see the memory boosters in security control. Um, Wyverns as well, a four of. Holy Wave, extraordinary in this deck too. Um, TK, I, I saw a lot of stuff about TK as well. People saying, well, it's going to harm me a lot more than it helps me in a lot of scenarios. With TK, yes, it can harm you. Um, you know, you could hit it at the lower part of your security and it could take one away from your ability to actually battle back in a turn. Um, but in a lot of cases, the taking away a security can actually help in this build too. Um, for instance, like a lot of opponents who will play security control with like an OTK deck, they will try to leave you on four until they have lethal. TK can help remove that fourth to make it a third and get your Magna on board and online to put you back up to five. Um, also letting you play a big body in the process, right? right. Um, so TK was actually very, very good in this deck, um, especially because you want to see those reinforcing memory boosters in hand. Um, you want to see those Magna Germans in hand. You, do, you don't want to hit them necessarily in security. Um, normally, if I do see a Holy Wave or a Wyvern's Breath in security, um, Holy Wave I will usually never touch. I, I will take a different card that won't get me a recovery over taking Holy Wave. Um, and, and that's only because it's so valuable in the security for just making and baiting somebody to go all in for an OTK turn. Mm -hmm. um, that that one stays in security. Like if you are going to play this build, if anyone's going to play this build, when you look with the TK, never take the Holy Wave if you can avoid it, um, unless it means like lethal, right? Mm -hmm. um, always take something like a big removal over that. Take something like one of your big Digimon, especially if you don't have the, the TK out yet. Um, so yeah, I, I think that was one thing that um, was actually ended up really good in the deck, even though at a glance it, it looks like it's going to harm the deck, right? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, um, what, what else is there? I guess um, the TK himself, the one of, the security TK, um, it's also very, very spicy in this build because, uh, you know, you have your Troy Mons at 13, you have your Cranias at 12, um, TK makes 14, 15, right? So you're now at the level of deleting their Zwart against Little of Loop if they hit a Troy in security, um, which actually happened to me uh, in the in the finals too, right? In the in the Nats, not not in the sorry, not in the top eight, but um, uh, on day two. Um, yeah, Crania, uh, he goes up to 14k. He can he can just remove the Gabus who are swinging in. It's just another form of removal against those big stacks, so they can only get one check, right? Mm -hmm. um, Outside of that, I mean, it's just, it's got to be horse. Like, uh, oh, so good. And and I, I was so surprised that nobody, like, I, I didn't see any meta lists really running this guy outside of, like, green, right? right. Um, in, in set control, even, I mean, he just fixes every single match that you need fixed. Um, he is, you know, that's three extra cards that you have to battle against Jessmon, along with Chikurimon. Mm -hmm. um, that's so many um so, so many agubon um triggers just killed immediately um something fun and uh i i kind of had a got you on, on one of my opponents who was playing diaboramon uh in in uh day two um they didn't know that diaboramons when they give blocker it's only on um it's only on my turn so on his turn, if he swings in with a Diaboromon, they're all blocker. He's like, oh, they're blockers. I say, no, they're actually not, right? Um, and then he ends up having to suspend some of those, which can sometimes be brutal because it can just let Troy swing back over one of the big Diaboromons in some cases. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a super spicy build. Um, you know, you get some value off the Pagu, Inheritable, not much. Um, 
every everything else i mean i i really enjoyed it i think it could use a couple more tweaks um but this honestly i was kind of testing it at nats which i know is ridiculous um <laughs> But uh, I, I think I, I think I can make it better as well, okay. um, even though it is in a very good place against the meta. Right. Well, we're better to test than something as serious as Nats. You know, I can see the logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, one thing I should mention, uh, and and you'll notice that it's not here. Uh, the lack of a card, um, Jewalt Schwarmer. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you see it in most security control builds, right? Right. Um, I don't run it. And it's only, and it, and it goes back to what I was saying before about security matters. Um, Jewel Trover is just going to go to your hand. It's not going to impact the board state. And then you have to play a whole, you have to use a whole turn to to use it in a lot of cases. Um, yes, it can help kind of wipe out some of the bigger bodies. But especially in a Mega Zoo build, you don't really care about the bigger bodies. Like if they're playing a big boy for five directly, if they're playing a big boy for seven directly, mm -hmm. you just slam down like a Cranium on for 13, or you slam down a Troy for 13, and it's like, you know, what are they going to do? Like they're going to swing with their guy, you swing over them. Um, it's just value, and, and I don't, I, I think Jewalt might be actually low-key one of the most overrated cards being played. Packing the ultimate flare and the Iron Fist and Onslaught, I think it covers the same ground. Right, exactly. And then um, with the Mecha Norris too, you know, it, it kind of, yeah. it deletes the Mecha Norris and like the Mechas, once you get that online with the Cranias, can just shut down some decks. Like um, it's essential against Diaboromon. Um, it is essential into some of the red matchups that just can't have a way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, black matchups, like, like, you know, Commandramons. Commandramon, yeah. there's no way it can beat a Mecha Norimon with a Craniumon. Okay. So what, um, decks that you end up facing across your two days with these and what would you say were your uh worst and best matchups yeah so um i i played everything under the sun um <laughs> it, it was amazing how many good ideas people came to this tournament with mm -hmm. um so yeah maybe maybe i i can go through the the uh, the order for you um i mean it's not it's not too much and then uh, i'll talk about a few key matchups maybe sure um so um the first round, I got a Gabumon. on. Um, mo most of these are wins. So I actually finished day one, nine and zero. Oh. Um, I was actually That's number so one needed. seed with this deck. Amazing. Yes. That's so good. Um, horse it gave me putting in the work. <laughs> right? <laughs> horse, horse is unbreakable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, it actually earned me a buy in day two, too. So it was That's pretty really big for yeah. the first seed. Huge. Um, but yeah, day one, I got a Gabu Bond right away. I got a Agu Bond following that. I got a set control. Um, then I got Jessmon, then I got Gabu Bond, then I got a Shine Greymon deck. I think that one was featured Ooh, on, nice. uh, on stream too. Cool. Um, then I got a Gabu Bond, um, then a Loop, and then a Rookie Rush to end the day. Um, day two, I actually I started with a buy. Um, then I got uh, Imperial Jermon next, super spicy. Then I got Diaboromon. Um, this was actually my first loss of the tournament. And uh, yeah, hats off to my opponent. I mean, we both misplayed terribly and uh he he just came out swinging and i could not stop it um so i mean just really really well played by by him too awesome um gob gabu was round four that was my second loss of the tournament i played another gabu bond which um which i rolled and then uh my last match of the day was actually against a big black deck um funny enough and and he would have made top eight with this mad lad build of just like <laughs> Digi burst War Greymon if he would have beat me. So, oh, um, luckily I had a good matchup into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, the big ones and the most stressful. So m most of these I even two owed. Um, there was only a few of these matches that I went two one in my wins, and each loss I took was two one. So e even the losses of, were very close. Mm -hmm. The bad matchups for me were very close as well. Um, the, the first one is the round four Jessmon. Um, I I should have lost this game, I think. Um, I, I bricked very bad on the first, uh, uh, in the first match. Um, he, he took it handily, and then somehow I just battled back with the Troys getting on the field. Um, it was enough to kind of stave it off and let me stabilize, and, and, and I took it 2-1. So that, that was one of the harder matches of the day. And then Shine was also a very difficult matchup. Um, the DP reduction, it just crushes my hard plays. Um, 
you know, if, if I'm if I play a Mecha Norimon one turn and then the next turn I follow up with Troy and they go shine, remove that, and then maybe they have memory to also go Valderar on top. Yeah. Um, it's it's just they're getting so much more advantage um, over it. Mm-hmm. Um, some somehow I, I eked it out. I mean, um, at the same time, they have a hard time dealing with. Um, and, and I realized this kind of in round two, um, just hard playing defeats over playing the Troys or the Craniumons. Um, that's what I ended up doing because his removal is basically his Digimon, right? Um, so if he's minusing my my DP on my Zwart, then it's like, okay, it's fine. I'll just remove your stack back. Um, and then eventually he just decks out, right? Because he has to go through the chains, whereas I'm hard playing most of my stuff. Um, so I thought that one was super interesting, and, and hats off to my opponent for going undefeated until round six with Shine too. That's super impressive. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> uh, outside of that, I mean, uh, another interesting matchup. I mean, everyone probably wants to hear about the Gabu Bond, um, right? Yeah, because that's that's the meta, right? Um, right. This deck ended up going um, day one, day two. Uh, before top eight, I was four or five against Gabu Bonds. So I, I won 80%, and all of those were 2-0, except for the loss, which was a 2-1. Okay. Um, so very, very good into the Gabu Bond. Nice. Um, really, what you want to do is you want to play that Ancient Troy as soon as possible. If they Kakaitis Breath it, um, you just get yourself to 3, and you just throw it down again. And you just keep throwing it down. Very interesting. It makes a lot of sense there, yeah, with the Troy being able to eat up all their restance on Gabu Bond and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, just just suspending them right after he unsuspends. It's like, okay, because uh, for, for those that don't know, Troy's effect actually happens after all the when a- attacking triggers. Because um, it goes like, you know, opponent, uh, sorry, whoever your opponent is, it's it's that turn's priority. They get all their priority effects. And then right. after they all resolve, mm-hmm. then Troy comes in to just kind of wreck their day. <laughs> it's really cool that it ended yeah. up um, working out that way. Was there like... Um, did you just look at Troy and you're like, wow, this is a great meta call? Or like, what led to putting him in the deck since he's like probably the biggest outlier? Although now it makes sense, you know, going over that. Yeah, um, that's that's a great question. Um, as I mentioned, so this deck started more as a regular security control and it slowly evolved. Uh-huh. Um, it, it used to be Sakuyamon in that place and a lot of people are running Sakuyamon. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. My thought process behind that is... Um, Sakuyamon doesn't really help against the wide board states. Um, this deck, I've already opted to not include Jewalt. Um, I need to attack it from different angles. Um, I want to basically, um, like, I, I don't know if you're if you're familiar with like um, Magic or whatever. I, I used to be a big Magic player back in the day. Um, stacks decks. So basically, the premise is just to layer a bunch of obnoxious effects over one another to the point where the opponent can't do anything um that's kind of where i drew the inspiration a little bit (laughs) and that's where troy was better than sakuyamon in that sense because it was better into the wide board states we've been seeing of like diaboramon of um of jessmon of of the the entire meta really right right that's awesome. So you, you've been alluding to it a bit in the profile, but now that like Nets over, you face all your opponents. Uh, what changes would you make to this going forward? Yeah. So um, this this list changed uh, three hours before the event. So, uh, <laughs> so oh, like, I, we've uh, all been there. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, oh man, probably one of the changes I would make is um, all delete. Honestly, after. Um, after facing the Gabu Bond matchup in the top eight and the other loss that I had to Gabu Bond, um, you have to have a way to deal with the Tamers, and there's none in this game at the moment. Um, so I think trying to make all delete work in this would be the first thing I change, and I probably sub out um, one, maybe even two Craniumons to do that. Um, I also felt like. Another thing is the ice wall um, just coming down, sometimes sticking you all on if you can't hit your memory tamer. Um, it can be ruthless too. So I think um, maybe removing one cranium on, maybe removing um, another as well for um, 
for an all delete um just to activate off off defeat Hit thanks for all that that insight on the deck it sounds like a really cool a really cool deck like it worked great you know taking you all the way up to sixth place in the north american nationals like amazing performance i gotta say too um the digimon community is is phenomenal as well um, i i had like the 12 games leading into the days and i was just oh. playing random opponents it was a mix of like whatever right like i, I right. wasn't making people play anything i, I was just kind of having fun with it um but yeah, they started to reach out once they saw me like on stream, and then once they saw I was, uh, you know, seven and zero, then eight and zero, they were all like, started messaging me, being like, "Dude, I had no idea I was playing somebody like this," <laughs> um, stuff like that. So it, it was super cool. It, it like, and then, like everyone, so like you were saying, like everyone's so nice and like supportive. Like, it, it's a really cool community. I'm glad like to be like in the Digimon TCG community, helping it grow and all that stuff. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, the people are great, and I, it's it's just cool how how you see people just adapt to the meta at every turn. Um, yeah, for sure. Like back in uh, Booster Set Five, like how Black ended up taking a bunch of tournaments because it was adapting to Lord Nightmon, and that was like after four sets of everyone saying the color is bad. Like that was really really cool. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? I think Black is in a very very good place now. Um, yeah. Is there any other closing thoughts you want to give uh, on this deck, uh, on Nats, or anything else? Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I'm just excited for the next one. I'm, I'm pumped at our world champions. I mean, um, hopefully they go on to just represent us, right? Yeah. Um, I, I pump, shout out to all my Canadian Digimon uh, champions out there too, because I got to rep the the True North, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. It was just a really good event. Um, and honestly, it just feels great being able to come at it with like something that I kind of made my own and, and uh, got to showcase it. Right, yeah, it's probably one of the most unique decks in like all of top eight. And that's got to be like such a satisfying feeling, totally. Yeah, yeah, it, it was uh, <laughs> it was super strange. I had no idea it would perform like it did, and it just carried me all the way. That's awesome, man. I'm really great to hear that. Uh, is there anywhere people can find you? Like, do you have anything you need to plug? Not so much. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm kind of just doing my own thing right now. I'll probably uh, end up maybe doing some some future videos, maybe uh, get some different like uh, battle battle reps in, um, maybe post some videos of that. So um, yeah, if anyone's looking for games, just hit me up. I'm down to, to rip some. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and coming on, Mitch. This was like a great time, really fun, really insightful. I hope you had a good time too. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I uh, love the pack podcast. I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to uh, your content too. Cool. Well, that was the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And thanks again. And congratulations again, Mitch, on your performance at Nats. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys.